music is off, but I'm still jamming. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. So glad to have you. Uh, good evening to all of our friends and family who are with us on Facebook Live. Please, please, please like, comment, and share. Please like, comment, and share on Facebook Live. Like, comment, and share. So grateful to have all of you with us tonight for another installment of On the Move to Discipleship, the midweek Bible study with the St. Luke Baptist Church in Berryville, Virginia. We're so grateful to have you with us tonight. Um, we will begin with prayer uh, and, uh, and we'll dive into our lesson together. Let me do this and that and that. Bow your heads with me if you would and we'll pray. Ask God to bless our time together. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for how you have kept us and preserved our lives. And we are thankful to be able to meet again for another session to study your word. We confess tonight, God, that your word is holy and we are dust, but you promised that the Holy Spirit would speak to us that which he has received of you. And so Lord, speak to our hearts tonight by your word. Help us, God, to uh, embrace the spiritual discipline of prayer. Give us new and different insights tonight as we talk about uh, this much coveted spiritual discipline much desired spiritual discipline. Father, we love you and we give you praise and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in our lives because of your word tonight. We honor you, we bless you, we magnify you, we respect and we acknowledge your presence. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Once again, good evening to you. <clears throat> tonight, so good to see all of you with us tonight. Uh, this is another installment of On the Move to Discipleship, the midweek Bible study of the St. Luke Baptist Church in Berryville, Virginia. Tonight, this is our third installment of our series, Is It In You? And tonight we talk about the discipline of prayer. We talk about the discipline of prayer tonight. Before we dive into our lesson, uh, I just wanna take this opportunity to say happy birthday to our strawberry shortcake. <laughs> to Trisha Bailey, Trisha, happy, happy, Happy birthday to you today. I hope that your day has been fantastic, that it has been uh, the best birthday ever for you. So happy birthday to you, Trisha. All right, listen, tonight, of course, our launch pad tonight is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. That's where you want to Turn your Bibles tonight, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And while you're turning there, let me take care of this little bit of business. We uh, share our lesson tonight in three sections, discussion, discovery, and direction. If this is your first time sharing with us, we share in these three sections. Discussion is where we have uh, you know, some icebreaker around our subject matter. Discovery is where we see what the word of God has to say about our subject matter. And direction is a take home piece for us to spend the next seven days in quiet contemplation and prayer and study related to our subject matter. So discussion, discovery, direction, that's how we roll out our lesson tonight. Uh, you may see a, a screen pop up tonight. You may see it. I don't think that you'll see one tonight. But you may see one that says, talk to me. 
When this screen pops up, this is your invitation to join in our conversation. We want you, if you're on Zoom, we want you to unmute and, um, <clears throat> and engage in uh, the, uh, the topical question. Uh, of course, uh, you can always submit your comments on Facebook Live, write them there in the comment section. We'll do our best to get to them when you see this talk to me come up, all right? And so that brings us uh, to the head of our lesson tonight uh, in our discussion section. Our discussion section tonight is uh, going to be an overview of what the spiritual disciplines are all about, all right? And so our, the spiritual disciplines define. Spiritual disciplines are habits, practices, and experiences that are designed to develop grow and strengthen certain spiritual qualities to build the muscles of one's spiritual life. Spiritual disciplines build the muscles of one's spiritual life. Spiritual disciplines invite us to explore the inner caverns of the spiritual realm. That's from Richard J. Foster, the author of the book, Celebration of Discipline. All right, why spiritual disciplines? Why? Because spiritual disciplines are catalysts to spiritual growth and spiritual disciplines call us to a deeper spiritual life. And I encourage all of you who are listening, who are watching tonight, I encourage each of us to, to have the desire to go to a deeper depth in our spiritual lives, all right? As we talk about these spiritual disciplines, we will talk about them in three sections, internal disciplines, external disciplines, and corporate disciplines, all right? We said the internal disciplines um, are for personal examination and change. All right, internal disciplines are for personal examination and change. Examination, and if I was going to use an alliterative word, I would say transformation. All right, so the internal disciplines are for personal examination and transformation, just to keep the alliteration sharp there. All right, the external disciplines prepare us to make change in the world around us. All right, so internal disciplines change us from the inside out and then external disciplines help us to become change agents in the world around us and then there are corporate disciplines and the corporate disciplines bring us nearer to one another and to god right nearer to one another and to god now I'm going to outline what these disciplines are. The internal disciplines are meditation, prayer, fasting, and study. All right? Internal disciplines are meditation, prayer, fasting, and study. And these change us, transform us from the inside out. All right? The external disciplines are simplicity, solitude, submission, service, all right? There are a few more than that. Um, if you were with us on Sunday, uh, I actually outlined, I think, six of these. Uh, there, were, there, were, there are a couple that I've left off this list, evangelism being one. Uh, but we'll share we'll share each of those. We'll share probably share all six of those uh, as we go through these. All right. So the external disciplines: simplicity, solitude, submission, service. I remember what it is now. I kept the S's because of the alliteration. All right. And then the corporate disciplines. The corporate disciplines are confession, worship, guidance, and celebration. And remember these, the purpose of these disciplines is to bring us closer to one another and closer to God. 
all right? Spiritual disciplines. They help build up spiritual muscle. Having said that, we go to our launch pad tonight. First Timothy chapter four, verses seven and eight. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. CSB says pointless and silly myths. Rather, train yourself in godliness. Well, this NIV says, train yourself to be godly. And if you've not done this yet in your Bible, I want you to underline that statement right there. Train yourself to be godly. Train yourself to be godly. One more time. You want to underline this in your Bible. Train yourself to be godly. Verse eight, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. First Timothy chapter four, verses seven and eight. That brings us to our study for the night, the discipline of prayer. The discipline of prayer. Here's the first thing I want you to get. If you're taking notes, if you're writing, this is the first point that I want you to take away. Prayer is the vehicle God uses to transform us. I'll leave this up here for a moment so you can see the entire statement. I want you to get this. Prayer is the vehicle God uses to transform us. Prayer is the vehicle God uses to transform us. Anybody ever heard uh, and and uh, for my folk on Facebook, on Facebook Live, if you've heard this statement, hit that heart button. Prayer changes things. Anybody ever heard that? Prayer changes things. Anybody ever heard that? Prayer changes things. I see Janice smiling on, on Zoom. I think Janice done heard that once or twice. Prayer changes things. Prayer change. Anybody ever heard that prayer? changes things. Well, you know what? And I I hope this bothers I hope this bothers your theology tonight. Hope this bothers your theology tonight. Sometimes, uh oh sometimes prayer doesn't change things. Uh oh. Uh oh. Where's that? Where's the little wow emoji? Somebody hit the wow emoji. Sometimes prayer doesn't change things. Sometimes prayer changes us. Woo! You want to get that? You want to get that tonight? Sometimes prayer doesn't change things. Sometimes prayer changes us in the middle of the thing. Oh, yeah. Wait, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. I'm going to say that one more time. Sometimes prayer doesn't change things. Sometimes prayer changes us in the midst of the thing. Let me, let me see if I can help you. Remember when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar's idol there in the plain of Dura. And somebody got word back to Nebuchadnezzar that they wouldn't bow down. 
and he challenged them on it. And they said, King, you can do whatever you want to do to us. We're not going to bow down to that idol. And the king said, okay, I got something for you. He said, y'all put some more coals on them fires and heat that joker up seven times hotter than it's ever been heated before. And watch this, watch this, watch this. When they went in, guess what didn't happen? God didn't make the fire go out. Oh my. God didn't put the fire out. He didn't send, you know, the angelic fire truck <laughs> to extinguish or douse the flame. But what he did was he changed them while they were in the flame. Help me tonight. And sometimes Sometimes we have to come to an understanding that the fire that we are experiencing, we are intended to be in that fire. I'm not saying all of them, but sometimes it is God's purpose for us to be in the fire. And when we go in, watch this, he will, watch this, he will change and transform us in the midst of the fire. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And so, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I believe, yeah, prayer does change things, but not all the time. Sometimes prayer changes me. Woo! Are y'all with me tonight? Sometimes prayer changes me. Prayer is the vehicle that God uses to transform us. Y'all with me? Transformation is an act of the will. In other words, watch this. You won't be transformed unless you want to be transformed. <laughs> Wait, let me say it again. Yes, prayer is the vehicle that God uses to transform us. But watch this, watch this. If you don't want to take the ride, that's on you. Yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know uh, I don't know how many of us have ever, uh, well, they not, they ain't really doing taxis nowadays. What they do now? Uber. I, ne I never, I've never called the Uber or uh, what's the other one? Lyft. I've never called one of them. So I don't really know how they work. But, uh, but a taxi cab, you, you do realize that, that you can refuse a taxi cab. <laughs> yeah, you can you you can call for it. Yeah, can y'all send a cab uh, to uh, you know to to seven one three West Pork and Bean Avenue? <laughs> <laughs> and and when the cab gets there to get you to your destination, you can refuse the ride. Help me. But you do realize that when you refuse the ride, you will never get to your expected destination. You'll be stuck there at 713 Pork and Bean Avenue. Help me. I just repeated that because I thought it was kind of funny when I said it. <laughs> Look, are are y'all with me tonight? Well, guess what? Transformation is the same. I know the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2, and do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I know that's what the Bible says, but what I'm saying to us tonight is this, transformation doesn't happen without your consent and participation. God just doesn't come in and transform you, watch this, apart from your will. And so if you don't want to be changed, guess what? God ain't going to change you if you don't want to be changed. Oh, yeah, I know that's revolutionary tonight. I know that's running contrary to what some people think. No, listen, God is so much God. Remember what Jesus said in the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 20. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock, which suggests that there's got to be some action on your part. Your will must want to be different. And if you don't want to be transformed, God will allow you to be who you are. Help me. So transformation is an act of the will. My passions and desires must be transformed. Understand this tonight. Prayer is the vehicle that God uses to transform me, watch this, and part and parcel of that transformation is my passions and my desires. Are y'all with me? Prayer moves me to think God's thoughts. It moves me to desire what God desires, to love what he loves, and to will what he wills. If I'm not thinking God thoughts, my prayers will be ineffective. If I don't desire what God desires, my prayers will be ineffective. If I don't love what he loves, my prayers will be ineffective. If I don't hate what he hates, my prayers will be ineffective. If I don't will what God wills, my prayers will be ineffective. So that's the first thing I want you to get tonight. Prayer is the vehicle that God uses to transform us. Y'all with me tonight? Hey, Facebook, if you're with me, just hit that like button. Let me know you're still with me. All right, that's the first thing I want you to get. Prayer is the vehicle God uses to transform me. Here's the next thing I want you to get tonight. Get this. Prayer is a learned behavior. Oh, boy. Get this tonight. Prayer is a learned behavior. Can I get on my soapbox for a moment? I mean, I got the mic, so I guess I can. I cannot tell you how much it bothers me to be in a corporate worship setting and somebody who has recently come to Christ and we immediately put them on the spot to offer prayer. We just call on them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sister Saucy, she just got saved. And since Sister Saucy, since you just got saved, would you would you just offer a little prayer for us tonight? Can I tell you something? If Sister Sauces just got saved, she don't know how to pray. The, pray that she, the prayer that she prayed to get saved was probably the first prayer she learned how to pray. She probably doesn't know how to pray beyond that. Oh, God. Some of y'all are thinking, but Reverend, it's just talking to God. Okay, let me ask you this. If you just got invited to the White House, oh, Lord. 
How easy do you think it would be to talk person to person to the president? Help me. You, there's some things you would have to learn, oh God, before you just step in the White House to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. There would be some things that you would have to learn, oh God, before you just step to Mr. Biden to try to have a conversation with him. I know you're saying he's people just like I'm people. Yeah, but he has a title ah, that demands a certain amount of respect. Help me. And there's a certain way that you have to talk. Oh, come on, somebody. Well, listen, it's the same thing. Yeah, prayer is a learned behavior. We got to learn how to pray. And that's why, listen, that's why a lot of believers who have been followers of the Lord Jesus Christ for 35 and 40 years, right to this day, they tremble in fear when you ask them to pray. They have, they just fall to pieces. Reverend, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. You know why? Because you haven't learned the behavior. Come on here, somebody. Yee! You haven't learned the behavior. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You haven't learned the behavior. I know, I know, I know. You watch your granddaddy and them pray. And so now you want to try to do it like your granddaddy and them. No, no, no. No, no, no. that's your granddaddy and them pray. Oh, God. My most high and heavenly father. Well, thank you, Jesus, for my last night laying down and this morning sleeping slumber. Early this morning, Jesus, you touched me with your finger of mercy. That, that was good for granddaddy and them. What's your experience? You got, listen, prayer. Come back to church, Pope. I went away. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was all the way in Dover, North Carolina. Prayer is a learned behavior. And you have to, watch this. You have to learn this discipline. You got to learn this discipline. Got to learn this discipline. Now, can I? I'm, I'm just being very honest with you. What I what I just did, I know I did it, you know, kind of mockingly, but but that's how I learned how to pray. <laughs> From listening to my grandfather, listening to my grandmother, and listening to those old deacons um, who used to sit on the front row at, at Comedy Hills Baptist Church in Seat Pleasant, Maryland. I used to listen to Deacon Lee when he would fall on his knees on that front pew in that friendly little church on the hill. And Deacon Lee would call on the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Now, I know Deacon Lee wasn't at your church, but I promise you had a Deacon Lee. I don't know where he was. I don't know what that name was, but you had you had a Dallas Lee at your church. I promise you had a Dallas Lee because Dallas Lee could call down heaven. Prayer is a learned behavior. It's a learned behavior. It's a learned behavior. And, and watch this. As it relates to this discipline of prayer, we cannot just expect and assume that because somebody is a Christ follower that they will automatically know how to do it. It's a learned behavior. You got that? Got that? Got that? Alvin, I, I'm gonna ask you if you got a comment. I'm gonna ask you to type it in the comments tonight. Prayer is a learn. I want you listen. I, I cannot emphasize this enough. I want you to get this tonight. That prayer is a learned behavior. Listen. We teach our children 
when they are very young. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul. We, we teach our children that prayer. But watch this, as they get older, we don't teach them to pray beyond that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And watch this, watch this. If it's not a habit for us, our children won't make it a habit for themselves. Are we together tonight? All right, so prayer is a learned behavior. I want you to get that. Prayer is a learned behavior. Watch this. Luke chapter 11, verse one. He was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, get this. One of his disciples said to him, Lord, do what? Teach us to pray. Just as John also taught his disciples. Look. They had a model. Get this. They had a model. John, before Jesus came on the scene, John the Baptist was teaching his followers how to pray. And when Jesus came on the scene and these men started following him and going around with him from place to place, they noticed, watch this, that John's disciples were possibly doing something that they weren't doing. And one of the disciples said, hey, Lord, I want to pray like that. Please teach me how to do it. Does that make sense? So, so, so he said, teach me, teach us, how to pray. He essentially said, I want to learn how to do it. So then the question becomes, what am I learning? What am I learning? All right. Teach me how to pray. What am I learning? Here's the first thing. I'm learning how to pray. All right. I'm learning how. That's not to say that there's a certain formula that you should use, but there are some formulas that you can use. You know, we got acts. We got uh, Matthew 6. We have that pattern. We learn how to pray. What else am I learning? I'm learning when to pray, how to pray, when to pray, how to pray, when to pray. I'm learning what to pray. Listen, I, listen, can I just get on my soapbox for a minute? One more time. This is going to be quick, though, I promise. I can't tell you how it bothers me. Like when I when I when I'm invited to go preach a revival or something like that, I go to somebody's church and they they call somebody up to pray for a specific thing. Let's just say I don't know the offering. And uh the prayer for the offering turns into prayer for the missionaries all around the world. Listen, I'm not saying we shouldn't be praying for missionaries all around the world, but in that moment, the assignment, oh God, is to pray for the offering. <laughs> and guess what? You ain't got to keep us 35 minutes praying for the offering. Help me. All right. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. How to pray, 
when to pray, what to pray, and get this, for whom I am praying. That's important, man. This is important. You got to understand, sometimes as it relates to this discipline of prayer, sometimes you're going to have to pray for a person specifically. So watch this. If I'm praying for you specifically, I want to, listen, I want to try to pinpoint what it is I'm praying for. Does that make sense? Whether it's something physical, whether you need direction from the Lord, whether it's financial, whether it's education, whether it's relational. If you want me to, listen, if I'm praying for somebody, if I'm praying for somebody, I'm just not going to go to God with generalizations. Oh, bless them, Lord. Nah, if you need two, listen, you need $228.11. I'm asking God to provide $228.11. Help me, somebody. And the fact is, watch this. The fact is, not only does God have the ability to provide what I need, woo, but he has the ability to provide more. Ah. Be specific. All right, what am I learning? I'm learning how to pray. I'm learning when to pray. I'm learning what to pray. And I'm learning for whom. I am praying. Remember, last thing, and I'm moving on. Remember when God spoke with Solomon. You gotta go back in, uh, in the Kings and Chronicles and read this. When God spoke with Solomon, he says Solomon was getting ready to become the king. And God said, Solomon, I haven't written this version yet. Solomon, what do you want me to do for you? And Solomon said, Lord, give me wisdom so that I can govern your people. And look at what God said, Solomon, you know what? Because you asked for wisdom, not only am I going to give you wisdom, I'm going to bless you with material wealth. Again, as that, as I haven't written that version yet, but that's essentially what God said. He said, Solomon, because you asked for wisdom, I'm gonna bless you in other ways. And so, you know, I raise that to say to us that when we learn how to pray and when to pray and what to pray and for whom we are praying, God has the ability to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or imagine, all right? Look at what James 4, two and three says, you desire and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. Verse three, you ask and don't receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You see that? You see that? Many people fail in this discipline of prayer because they don't fully understand prayer's use. Y'all got that tonight? Get this. This is important. I want you to write this down. This is not a teaching point. This, this is supporting what we just stated what you want to get this. The word of God informs our prayers. 
You want to learn how to pray? Read the Bible. You know why? Because when you pray, as, as watch this, as we understand it to be talking to God, watch this, talk God's words back to him. The word of God should inform your praying. Have, have you ever wondered? I got a I, I got a good brother. I got a good brother in Winchester. And there's not a time that I've heard him pray, not one, that he doesn't begin his prayers with some scripture. Matter of fact, he's he's got a he's got a a, a, a list that he goes through, same ones almost every time. I'm talking about Ford. I'm talking about Reverend Ford over there at, at Mount Carmel in Winchester. You ain't gonna hear Ford pray and and not and not use, incorporate the word of God, and he's not gonna do it. You know why? Because the word of God informs our praying. You got that? I need listen, I need you to get this tonight. This discipline of prayer is so important. It is transformational for us because of the word of God. Yeah, yeah, we quoted that verse from, from Romans 12 about the renewing of your mind. That only comes about as a result of the word of God. And so it watch this. If you're going to engage this discipline of prayer, you need to do it, watch this, from an informed platform. And the word of God are the plank or is the planks of that platform. Yeah. 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 Get you some verses that you can quote, that you can speak back to God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and strength. My God in him will I trust. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Have you not known? Have you not heard? that the Lord, the everlasting God, he does not sleep or slumber. Come on, man. Come on, man. If you're going to participate in this discipline of prayer, if you're going to become a person of prayer, if prayer is going to transform you from the inside out, you need to learn the word of God. And speak that word back to him. My time is almost up. Let's move on. Last one. You want to get this. Prayer is intentional. Prayer is intentional. You know, uh, you guys hear me say, all of the time related to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, that we are created with a purpose, for a purpose, on purpose. Well, I want to tell you something. We ought to pray with a purpose, for a purpose, on purpose. Get that tonight. Get that tonight. You ought to pray with a purpose for a purpose, on purpose. Prayer is intentional. You can't accidentally pray. <laughs> oh, I prayed on accident. No, you didn't. You meant to pray. Help me. And the unfortunate thing about prayer or not the unfortunate thing about prayer, the unfortunate thing about how we engage prayer 
many of us use prayer, you know, like it's a critical tool in our toolbox. And we only go to the toolbox when we need that tool. Help me. You know what I mean? You know, it's like, you know, it's like the lug wrench in your car. Y'all know what a lug wrench is. You know, that the lug wrench is the thing that take, you know, that take the lugs off your tire so you can change it. And the only time that you need your lug wrench, help me, is when you got that flat tire. Otherwise, you're not thinking about a lug wrench. When you're driving down the road, getting your gas, you lug wrench is not on your mind. Help me, somebody. You doing whatever it is that you're doing, you ain't thinking about a lug wrench. But let a nail hit your tire. Ah, let that thing get a slow leak and you go outside in the morning. You know you got to be at work by 8 and it's 7.52. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And you see that that tire is flat. You don't even give it a second thought. Oh, I need my lug wrench. Well, guess what? That's how we treat prayer. A lot of people only keep prayer in their back pocket. Help me. And they don't think about it. They don't give it any consideration until their spiritual tires go flat. Help me. And then when, when God comes by and blesses them and you know fixes whatever that situation is, they put it away. And they don't give it thought no more until the next time they in trouble. Help me, somebody. Prayer must be intentional. Prayer must be purpose. Prayer has to be done as an act of your will. And it's not a one-time event. Let me see if I can show you in the word of God. Y'all look like I'm wearing y'all out tonight. God, you are my God. I eagerly seek you. Get that right there. I eagerly seek you. I thirst for you. My body faints for you in a land that is dry, desolate, and without water. Get this tonight. I eagerly seek you. David says in Psalm 55, evening and morning and at noon will I cry out to God. It's intentional. I pray on purpose. I pray with purpose. I pray for a purpose. Listen to what the word of God says, because I'm I'm closing in on my time tonight. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says this. Pray constantly. Got it? Got it tonight? Prayer is intentional. Prayer is intentional. Prayer is a learned behavior. Prayer is the vehicle God uses to transform me. We're going to close tonight. Here's our direction. Mark out time in your schedule this week for prayer. I told you it's intentional. So set your alarm. Get, get, your, get your mobile device and put it in your calendar. Put an alert on it. 15 minutes before time. 
and commit that time to pray. Listen, if this is not something that you do regularly, I'm not asking you to pray for no 30 minutes. Nope. I've shared this at St. Luke before. I want to share it uh, on this platform tonight. Listen, start out by praying. If you, if you don't pray regularly, listen, commit to this for the next seven days. I'm going to pray one sentence every day for the next seven days. If you listen, if you don't know how to pray, hear me now, hear me well. If this is not something that you do regularly, you're not in the habit of praying. I'm, I don't want you to get overwhelmed, but I want you to begin the practice. Pray a one sentence prayer and don't make that sentence a paragraph. Oh God, one sentence. And depending on what time you pray, if you pray early in the morning, Make that sentence something like, Lord, give me wisdom for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. And then the next day, wisdom will teach you, Lord, help me not to go off on folk. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. I know I'm... I know I'm bringing, I'm, I'm injecting some humor, but but I'm 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 really serious about this. And then the next day, find you know you know find a find another sentence to pray. God help my mouth today. Help me not to cuss somebody out. <laughs> you, you you follow me? But listen this. This for all my beginners, all right? And understand this, if you've been in church for a number of years and prayer is not your habit, you might wanna try this also. Mm -hmm. God, help me keep my mind focused on this today. Yeah, come on, y'all. Come on. I see Linda Anderson on here. Uh, Linda, Linda Anderson could tell you in the recovery community, you know, there's an idiom in the recovery community that, that says not just one day at a time, one moment at a time. Same difference with prayer. Same difference with prayer. One moment at a time. Listen, I don't expect you to come out of this, uh, you know, this short session, you know, being able to call down angels and fire and brimstone. I don't expect that. But what I do expect is that you will practice this discipline until it becomes your life habit. So mark out some time in your schedule this week to pray. I want you to read and hear the word, right? Read and hear the word of God. I want you to pray with purpose. Get a pad and write down what you prayed, today is Wednesday, what you prayed on Thursday, and then what you prayed on Friday and Saturday and Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. And then by the time you get to next week, watch this, 
you'll be able to build on that one sentence and add a second sentence. Ah. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Pray with purpose. And then watch this. Practice listening. Get this. Through the word of God. Hear what I say. Read and hear the word of God. Pray with purpose and then practice listening through the word of God. So what that means is, is that when I read and hear the word of God and then I pray with purpose, I have to go back to the word of God and read and hear it again so that God can speak to me through his word. Wow. Because remember, the word of God informs our prayers. And that is the catalyst of transformation. All right. All right. We're over time. I'm sorry. I kept you long tonight. It's actually like 8.01. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, I hope that you've been blessed and challenged by our lesson tonight. I want to thank you for joining us. Remember that Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. What we say at St. Luke Church related to that verse is this, that you, my friend, are created with a purpose, for a purpose, on purpose. And it is our prayer that in this year of 20 and 21 that you will live in purpose. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you. Don't forget this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. It'll be worship on the yard. All right. So I look forward to seeing you at St. Luke Church at 10 a.m., 10 a.m. We'll do Sunday school at 9 a.m. Uh, we will, and, and remember, remember, remember for Sunday school, it's June with Janice and Libby. Ha! All right, it's June with Janice and Libby. So, so uh, we'll see you at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. We'll see you at 10 o'clock for worship. And God bless you this Lord's Day. I commend you to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or imagine according to the power that is at work in you. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, world without end. Amen.